our topic for today I in the book of Psalm 77 and this is about the troubled heart remembering God's great works and minsan minsan nakaka minsan kailangan natin yung sister mercy eh. we need God will allow some troubles Because troubles makes us closer to God. Mm. Amen ba? It makes us closer to God. It makes us remember God. Kasi kung wala ka ng trouble, pabanjing-banjing ka na. Amen ba mga kapatid? Pamol-mol ka na lang. Hindi ka na nag attend May visa na eh. Oh. Eh kung wala pang visa, oh. Bawat katok ng pulis, naku, atin ako ng church kasi nandun si pastor doon eh. Kapunta na nga ng church. O, oh, diba? Yung ating mga troubles, mga kapatid, <coughs> the days of trouble are the days of prayer. It should be the day to seek God. The day to seek His favor and to seek His grace. Amen ba mga kapatid? Kailangan may mga tao kasi ang ginagawa. Pagka may problema, magiinom, magmumubi, mag, uh, magbuburakay, maglalamyerda, magkakaraoke, o kaya magkukulong sa kwarto, o kaya magpepe-Facebook. Ilalagay ang problema sa Facebook. Feeling nila yung Facebook nakakatulong sa kanila. But the day of trouble, Sister Mercy, is the day of our prayer seeking God's mercy, seeking God's favor, and seeking God's grace. It, it is the point where we have to get closer, more closer with God. Amen mga kapatid, yun ang itinuturo ng Psalms ng ating aralin ngayon mga kapatid. Yun ang sinasabi ng awit. At sinasabi dito mga kapatid na Has God forgotten to be gracious? Natutulog ba ang Diyos? Kaya maganda yung kanta ni Gary V. Kasi itong si Asap na, uma- na gumawa ng awit na ito Nagtatanong baka Yung awa at biyaya ng Diyos E eh expired na But ganon, parang hindi na ako pinapakinggan ng Panginoon. Baka nakalimot na ang Diyos. At minsan, whether we like it or not, let's be honest, wag na tayong magbanal-banalan pa, pero hindi nakakaranas na, nakakaranas tayo ng ganyang pagtatanong sa Diyos. Nakakaranas na whether totoo ba ito talaga ng Diyos na itong pinaglilingkuran ko. Minsan, there will be a point where you will ask whether God is listening to you. At ito ang sabi niya, mga kapatid. Ang sabi ni Brother Asap, and I said, this is my anguish. I checked the definition of anguish online by Oxford Dictionary. Anguish is defined as extreme unhappiness caused by physical or mental suffering. So, yung anguish ay resulta ng sakit, hapde, suliranin, and ang resulta nagkaroon ng extreme unhappiness, yung sobrang lungkot. <coughs> At ito ang sinasabi ni Asap, this is my anguish. Because there will be time that there will be a big difference between what you believe and what is happening to you. And that is the problem. That is where faith has to come into play. Because most of the time, Sister Mercy, faith is faith. Faith is something that has not yet happened. But what you may be feeling right now is what is evident to you. So the distance, the gap between your faith, the gap between what you believe, 
And what is happening to you in between, yun ang problema. And ito yung sinasabi ni Brother Asap that this is my anguish. This is the extreme unhappiness that I am feeling right now. At minsan, let's be honest, nangyayari yan sa atin mga kapatid. Nangyayari yan sa atin yung extreme unhappiness na yan. Kahit ano pang banal ng tao, kahit ano pang palasimba ng tao, kahit ano pang panalangin ang gawin ng isang tao, but there will be a point in our lives that your faith has to be tested. Faith which is untested cannot be trusted. Faith which is untested cannot be trusted. So kung yung pananampalataya mo, wala ka pang pagsubok, then therefore, wala pa. Madali kasing manampalataya pag lahat swerte eh, pag lahat shoot eh. Madaling manampalataya pag laging maganda ang buhay eh. Pag walang, pag walang problema. But look at the response of Brother Asap in the book of Psalms. But I will remember. But I will remember. You see, and that faith, Sister Arlene, if you remember in the, in, in the Old Testament where Joseph interpreted the, the, the dreams of the king, there were seven years of famine. And it was that kind of predictions or prophecy na sinabi niya doon sa paraon na mahal na hari, mahal na paraon, magkakaroon po ng pitong taong tagutom. That was painful. But memory remembered that there will, that there will be, after seven years of famine, there will be seven years of prosperity. Seven years of growth. Nagkaroon ng naalala ni Joseph that after the seven years of famine, he remembered, he believed that after the seven years, he will open the rice granary of Egypt. Kaya, mapapansin mo, Sister Mercy, ang mga matured Christian, one of the trademarks of a matured Christian is seeing or amplifying, kicking in faith despite of distrust, despite of unbelief. Lord, parang si Job, Panginoon, yes, nangyari lahat ito sa akin. I've lost everything. I, I'm, I'm going to die, but I will still put my trust in you. That's how strong faith Job had. Hindi madali yung kay Job. It was not easy. Asap said, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High God. Doon sa panahon, Sister Mercy, ng discouragement, he made that decision that I will remember the good things that God has planned for me. He decided, he made the decision that better times, <coughs> that the best is yet to come. That God has a better hope. That God has a better plan for his life. You see, Sister Charmy, one of the things that I learned, and I will be teaching this in our future sermons, we have to learn how to handle winters. We have to learn how to handle the winter of life. Kasi lagi natin sinusumpas, Sister Allen, ayun, lamig, 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 lamig. There's no point of complaining winter because winter is a part of life. You have to learn how to master the problem. You have to learn how to master the time of suffering 
the time of sickness, the, 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 the time of loneliness, the time of pain. Because it is a part of life. If you don't handle how to, if you don't learn how to handle winters of life, you will always curse, you will always complain about winter. If you always complain about your employer, about life, about going abroad, everywhere you go, you will always complain. Do you understand, mga kapatid? You cannot get rid of the winter season. Winter season in the UK, Sister Prezi, is about December, January, February. You cannot just simply, Sister Mercy, you cannot just simply get rid, you cannot get rid of January or December simply by tearing it off the calendar. You cannot just tanggalin mo lang sa kalendaryo ang January, wala ka ng January, February na kaagad o March. Do you understand, Sister Arlene? For the last 6,500 years of, huma of human's life, we always have winter. Ecclesiastes is very true. There will be seasons of life. There will be winter. There will be fall. There will be summer. There will be nights. You have to learn how to handle nights. Because night time comes. You cannot get rid of nights. Hindi pwedeng ayaw mo ng gabi, gusto mo araw lang palagi. But you have to learn how to handle the nights of life. Because night time always comes. It doesn't change. It's a part of human. It, it's part of life. But here is what we can do. In the winter, during the night time of our lives, Sister Arlene, we can get stronger, we can get wiser, we can get better. Sa mga pagsubok ng buhay, diyan ka lalakas, diyan ka tatapang, matuto ka. Maging matapang ka, maging malakas ka, maging mas marunong ka. <coughs> That's why, God always allow winters of life. And that's what I'm trying to do. I was explaining and sharing this to Sister May this morning. I said to Sister May, you know, baby, we have to learn how to handle winters of life. While I was driving, going to drop Sister Chelsea and Sister Jewel, I said, winter is always like this. We have to either enjoy it or hate it. Pero kahit kagalitan mong winter, Sister Arlene, hindi mo kayang takasan ng winter. Magbibihis at magbibihis ka. Hindi pwede hindi ka magtatrabaho, Sister Mercy. Kahit winter, lalabas at lalabas ka. So learn how to handle the winters of life. Learn how to handle the night time of life. Kailangan mas maging marunong tayo. Yun ang ginawa ni Brother Asap. I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. He decided to remember. He decided how to, he decided to learn how to master. Na parang nawawala na siya ng pag-asa. But either I learn how to handle this problem properly. Or this problem will defeat me. Yun ang tinuturo mga kapatid ng ating, <coughs> ng ating salita ng Diyos ngayon. Pag hindi mo minahal, hindi mo pinag-aralan, hindi mo minaster ang buhay, bakit may mga taong laging walang pera? Napunta ng Qatar, napunta ng Macau, napunta ng Hong Kong, napunta ng Kuwait, napunta ng Korea, laging purdoy. So Sister Charmy, is the problem. Kasi maraming ano eh. Si Sir Arlene, may nakausap ako. Kasi may attorney, Alam mo, kahit yan ako magpuntang bansa, lagi ang walang pera. Bakit? Ba't lagi yung walang pera? Nagpunta ako ng Singapore. Nakalabing tatlong taon ako. Nabili ko lang, sanyo na electric fan. Praise the Lord. Hmm? Nakatatlong taon sa kwait, nakabili naman daw siya ng bagong TV. So, lagi pa rin siya walang pera. 
Ay, bakit naman? Anong problema? Kasi ganito eh. Atorney, ganito eh. Uh, alam mo, ganito. Ang dami kong problema. Yung mga anak ko, pasaway. Yung aking bianan, pasaway. Yung, alam mo, yung si ano, yung presidente natin, ako, ang bubobo niyan. Ang dami mga mali. Sinisising gobyerno. Sister Cecil. <coughs> Sinisising exchange rate. Sabi ko, teka muna. Ang laki na exchange rate sa kwait ha. Ang kwait, malaki exchange rate. Oo nga, pero baba naman ang, ang ano kong amo ko. Nako, napakatapa, napakasungit, napaka, napakadamot. Hindi mataas magpasweldo, napaka, napakababa magpasweldo. Nako, ang dami kong problema sa kanila. Pinakit sa, Sister Cecil, inilista ko yung kanyang mga reklamo sa buhay. Ang dami niya, gobyerno, pamilya, mga anak niya, asawa niya, bianan niya, pati pusa niya, reklamo niya Alam mo, Sister Mercy, ang sabi ko sa kanya, ang ganda ng, ang ganda ng list mo eh. Alam mo ang problema dito? Wala ka dito sa listahang to. Ang problema, kapatid, ay hindi pusa, hindi aso, hindi bianan, hindi, ta, hindi mga anak mo, hindi gobyerno. Ang problema mo ay ikaw. Wala ka dito sa listahang ito. The problem is you. Learn to become the master of your winter. The winter will always come. It always comes. Look at what happened to David. Pinag-aaral lang ko yung Pastor Johnny ngayon ang, because I'm preparing my sermon every day. I prepare my sermon. Boom, 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 boom. I always meditate on the life of David. Look at the life of David, Sister Arlene. David was a young boy. Alam natin that he was the youngest son of Jesse. But David understood na kapag siya ay nasa field, nasa shepherd's field, he understood, he anticipated that he will be attacked by the lion and the bears. He understood, he anticipated that. He did not excuse himself na, ay, bata ako eh. Baka daddy, baka mapatay ako dito, bet ako pa, si kuya na lang. But David understood the principle. He anticipated the problem. So he expertized himself. He made himself expert in killing the bears and the lions by his own hands. That is life, Sister Arling. You have to learn how to master the problem. Because on those problems, some problems, Sister Cecil, are blessings in disguise. Some problem can come, but that problem is a blessing in disguise. Your tears People cry, Sister Mercy, but those tears can be a blessing in disguise. So be like Asap. Remember what God has promised you. Remember and meditate on the goodness of God. Remember how God saved you. Remember how God being kind to you. Remember the works of God previously. Meditate on His Word. Get stronger. Get wiser. And get better. Just like David. Just like David. Sister Arlene. He anticipated. Sinanay niya ang sarili niya eh. Either patayin ko itong mga bear na to, o mga layo na to, or sila papatay sa akin. Ay, maunahan ko na kayo. That expertise... That technique, that strategy, Sister Mercy, was the same replica that David used against Goliath. Kaya yun ang reason niya, kay, kay Haring Saul, di ba? Sabi ni Haring Saul, eh, teka muna, bata-bata ka pa. Itong si Goliath, he has been training as a warrior ever since he was a young boy. He was bigger twice much as your size, boy. And King Saul was putting his uh, armories. Yung kanyang sandata, yung kanyang espada, yung kanyang pananggalang, yung kanyang belt, yung kanyang armories. Binibigyan niya kay David, no? Ano ang sabi ni David? My king, I was trained to kill the lion and the bear. 
the same technique, the same God who was with, He remembered. Sister Mercy, naunawaan mo. Kaya mahalaga sa tao, Sister uh, Arlene, merong remembering. Meron tayong monitoring, meron tayong recollection. Babalikan mo palagi yung mga ginawa ng Diyos kahapon. How God was good to you in the past is the same God who will be good to you now and He will be good to you in the future. Ganoon na sabi ni David, Panginoon mahal na hari, ang Diyos ko na nagturo sa akin upang pumatay ng mga leon at ng mga oso at ng mga asong lobo, the same God of Israel will be with me to kill these giant Philistines and I will feed his heads on the air, on the birds of the air. Nagkaroon siya ng recollection eh. Kaya ang mga taong nagtatagumpay palagi, Sister Chami, they always remember. Mahalaga yung reckoning. Mahalaga yung pag-alala sa kabutihan ng Panginoon. Ganun eh. Naging mabuti ang Panginoon eh. Naging, naging mabuti ang Panginoon eh. Binuksan ng Panginoon yung dagat na pula. God opened the Red Sea. God was walking. <laughs> When there was a mighty wind, when there was a big thunder and lightning na tumama sa tubig, Sister Mercy, God was walking through the sea. And it is a reminder, it is reminded to us, Sister Charmy, when Jesus himself walked to the water. When God walks on the water, the, the water was so scared. And it, it, it tells us on the Bible that the greatness of God at the Red Sea. And it says, the waters saw you, O God. Asap was saying, Asap was giving us a hint of how the water saw the greatness of Yahweh. The greatness of God. When God walked through the water, the water parted. Because that, Because Jesus, because God, Sister Arlene, was leading. If this is God, God was going ahead. God was walking and Israelites were following Him. It now brings us to that picture, Sister Arlene, when Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd always walk in advance. The, the good shepherd walks ahead of the ship. He walks ahead of the flock so that the shepherd can see if there are troubles, if there are dangers ahead. When God departed the Red Sea, it was God who was walking ahead of the Israelites. Yon ang sinasabi, Sister Mercy, ng salita ng Diyos. Kaya, mahalaga ang pag-alala. Ito pa, Sister Arlene. Tama si Pastor Jay, hindi natapos. Hindi na tapos yung Hindi na tapos yung himala ng Panginoon doon sa paghihiwalay ng dagat na pula yung Red Sea. God did not leave the Israelites after that. It was one of the mystery. And until now I'm watching on National Geography or Geographic if that was true. But that was very very But the Bible sister Chami said, God did not leave the Israelites after the parting of the Red Sea. He stayed with them. He stayed with them having <coughs> the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. God was with the Israelites All through the journey. All through the journey. From day one, Sister Mercy, God was with the Israelites until they entered the promised land. He did not. In fact, God said to Moses, Make me an ark of covenant. It was not the proposal of Moses that I will make you an ark of covenant. It was God himself telling Moses and Aaron, make me an ark of covenant. And on that ark of covenant, Sister Charmy, I will be there. My presence will go there inside the ark. So that God will be with the Israelites all through the journey. 
hindi tayo iniwanan ng Diyos, Pastor Johnny. Hindi ka iiwanan ng Panginoon sa lahat ng laban mo sa buhay. God, even He even made a promise, Sister, Sister, Sister Arlene. We have a song. <coughs> ano sabi ni Jesus? I will be with you until the end of time. God said, I will be with you until the end of the world. Wherever you go, I will be with you. He even made himself Emmanuel, Sister Arlene, which means God is with you. God is with you, Sister Charmy. God is in you. When you open your hearts and invited Jesus Christ to enter in your life, Sister Prezi, Jesus now is in you. Wherever you go, you have God inside of you. And if God is for you, Sister Arlene, greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Even the waters of the Red Sea, Sister Arlene, Even the water, Sister uh, Mercy, listen to God. Remember when Jesus called, the, remember when he was on the boat, Sister Cynthia, when he was on the boat and it was windy, it was stormy and the disciples were waking him up. Sabi ng mga, mga, mga apostol, Panginoon, Panginoon! <coughs> hindi po ba kayo na, hindi po ba kayo na nagigising? Hindi po ba kayo nag-aalala ng malulunod tayo? Jesus stood up. Jesus stood up. He rebuked the wind. He rebuked the storm. He rebuked the wave. When God speaks, Sister Mercy, when God speaks, the whole world trembles. Pag binasa mong book of Job, Sister Mercy, it reminds us that the thunders and the lightnings are the voice of God. The earthquakes sign is a sign that God moves. That's how powerful God is. Kaya, pag ganito ang klase ng pataas ng paniniwa, mataas ang iyong paniniwala sa Panginoon Sister Charmy, Aalalahanin mo yung mga magagandang ginawa ng Panginoon. Panginoon, yes, nangyayari sa akin to. Panginoon, yes, may mga kalungkutan akong nararanasan. Panginoon, yes, maaring itong prayer ko hindi pa answered. <coughs> but just like Asap said, But I will remember the great works of God. Aalalahanin ko yung mga ginawa na ng Diyos sa akin. At pag inalala mo yung kabutihan ng Panginoon, Magkakaroon ka ng peace of mind. When you remember the goodness of God, God will repeat and God will do everything that you prayed for. Dadaling ka ng Panginoon sa isang lugar, dadaling ka ng Panginoon sa mga bansa, dadaling ka ng Panginoon sa buhay na kahit ikaw hindi mo inakala because you keep believing to the greatness, to the goodness of God. Yan ang puhunan natin eh. Kapag nawalan ka na ng pananampalataya, nagkaroon ka na ng doubt, that is the beginning of fall. But just like, King, just like si Asap, have something to remember. Alalahanin mo yung ginawa ng Panginoon. Red Sea, pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. Panginoon, hindi mo ako iniwanan. Panginoon, dati wala akong visa eh. Pakinoon dati nasan doon lang ako sa nandun lang ako sa 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 Qatar eh. Pakinoon dati ang litang sweldo ko eh. Pakinoon dati janitor lang ako eh. Pakinoon dati ganito lang ako eh. Pakinoon dati nanghihingi lang ako eh. Look how far God has taken you. Gano'n na kalayo ang dinala gano'n na kalayo sa ng buhay. Kaya tama sabi ni King David. <coughs> Sister Mercy Ano sabi ni King David? From the shepherd's field, when he became the king, the most famous king of Israel kingdom, he said in the book of Psalms, Who am I, Lord, 
that you will take me this far in life. Sino ako, Panginoon, para dalhin mo ko sa ganong kalayong buhay? Hindi ako karapat dapat. Isa lang akong, isa lang akong nag-aalaga ng mga tupa, but you made me, you brought me so far. And the God that brought you that far will never leave you. What God has started in your life, Sister Arlene, He will finish. Tatapusin ng Diyos ang mga pangako ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Amen? Naniniwala ako mga kapatid, 2023, magiging maraming multimillionaire sa atin mga kapatid. Amen? Maraming magkakaroon ng visa sa atin. Maraming gaganda ang buhay sa atin. Maraming makakapagpagawa ng bahay sa atin. Maraming makakabili ng kotse sa atin. Maraming magiging maganda ang buhay, mga kapatid. Palakpakan natin ang Lord. Pastor Johnny, wala pa tayo sa church, ha? Ito, kapatid, ay Bible study pa lang, pero I can feel the presence of the Lord. Amen? Palakpakan natin ang Lord. Back to you, Pastor Jay.